Everything is difficult. Everything is challenge. Through adversity. Oh. To the last minute. To the last second. To the last minute. We fight. 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 Let's go. Oh. Outside the Miami Heat culture, <laughs> you think that Pat Riley runs the team with an iron fist. And I, you know, I, I remember playing the Heat, and you'd see everyone come off the bus, Alonzo Mourning, Eddie Jones, Tim Hardaway, in suits. Well, everyone else was in track suits at the time, you know, velour j- tr- jumpsuits in the, in the early 2000s. And you heard about the conditioning test, and you heard about uh, just a very almost like militaristic uh, culture, but they won. But they won. You know, when I got here, uh, it was a little, it was way, way looser than I expected. But there were standards. There were standards, and um, there's a reason why they're a top organization. Because what Pat Riley does, and by the way, you can understand why he wanted to go to Miami, because oh, it's no. like that Rihanna song oh, she talk. did with Jay Z. I mean, talk on. that talk. Oh yeah. Pat Riley. Miami? I'm not even talking about South Forget Beach. Forget oh, LA. No, 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 no. Oh, Miami. No, no, no. no. Yeah. You got it wrong. I'm not talking about South Beach. I'm talking about. Pat Riley picked up the phone and talked that talk to Jimmy Butler. You know Pat Riley speaks Jimmy Butler's language. He's talking about working. He's talking about grinding. He's talking about wanting it more than the other guy. Butler is the perfect Pat Riley player. And Pat Riley is the perfect Jimmy Butler executive. And I think not about the Dwayne Wade, Shaquille O'Neal, or the Miami Big Three heat. You know what I think about, Stephen A? I think about the Alonzo Mourning, Tim Hardaway heat. That he, those guys, Riley put together his big and little. He didn't have, you know, Kareem and Magic, but he got tough-minded players, put them together. And even though the Heat used to get knocked out by the Knicks in the first round, they were a powerhouse Eastern Conference team that played with pride and that the city loved. But I like the way we. If I was a player, and I look at what Deion Waiters has done, James Jones, and all those guys that went down to Miami, Reed and all those guys, and I look at how their game has transformed, being in that environment with Coach Sposa and then Pat Riley. If you're a guy with talent that's kind of been on the fringe, that's a great spot for you because they're going to provide discipline, they're going to give you direction, and then you're going to have opportunity to play. Discipline, direction, and structure. We've talked that's about that, Sam. With Vince, Vince, too. You're to get back in. Uh, we, we kind of warned our guys before the game about uh, what a tough team this is to play. Uh, Miami, every year, no matter what their roster looks like, they're one of the uh, best defensive clubs, um, most disciplined. They just compete. They play hard. And um, so it was just one rebound after another. I think it was 19-3 to three on, the, uh, on the glass. It didn't look good. The odds uh, were that very few teams ever came back from a, a 2-0 deficit uh, to win a world championship. But I remember writing on the board prior to game three that we would win the world championship, that we would celebrate with a parade on Biscayne Boulevard on June 20th, 2006. I said very little, very little. The only thing I said to them was I took a balloon, I took a green balloon, and I started to blow the balloon up, and blow it 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 up, and the important thing that I wanted to make to them a point was that as the balloon began to expand, just like in a game, when the pressure began to expand in the game, that you could never let the balloon explode. You had to deal with the pressure. And as the pressure began to build, you could never explode or lose what it was you had to keep from a sanity standpoint to make sure you could win that game. Our balloon never exploded. Theirs did. So, you know, we rallied together and, you know, we go up 3-2 and then Pat Riley comes in pissed off. We ain't practicing today. We go in here tomorrow and you better bring one suit. When you get to the airport tomorrow at 12 o'clock, I'm checking. If you ain't got one suit, your ass ain't coming on the plane. So when we got to the airport, he's checking people back and we actually had to bring one suit. True story. True story. So we get to the airport, he's checking everybody's bag to see if we had one one suit. Because he's like, we're up 3-2, we're going on that floor, we're going to end it. There ain't going to be no game seven. And that's what everybody had to think about. And he's probably one of the greatest motivators. Him and Dale Brown, are, are, they, they, you know, when they tell stories before a game, you just want to go out and kill people. The man who played in seven All-Star games, I'm talking about Alonzo Mourning. He called it a career today. What is the legacy, legacy rather, Zoli's behind? 
intensity. That's really what you think about when you talk about Alonzo Mourning. He, this man, was as intense as they came. A matter of fact, a whole bunch of his teammates did as much as they loved him. They also didn't like him because he was the standard setter uh, for the Miami Heat franchise. He was religiously in the weight room. He'd be in the weight room six, seven hours a day at a time at some points in his career. He worked religiously, religiously tirelessly, uh, and that got on teammates' nerves because certainly that was the standard that Pat Riley wanted everybody to live up to, and it was virtually impossible. But he's a seven-time All-Star. He's a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, and in my mind, he's a Hall of Fame. My first return back to Miami since uh, you know, I decided to go back home and uh, you know and play play for the Cavs. And, you know, it's a lot of emotions right now. You know, I'm about, about 15 minutes away from going to the bus. And a lot of emotions, just you know, so many memories down here, man. And uh, you know, the last four years, yeah, with, with my teammates and you know, staff and you know, you know, fans here and, and everything. You know, we, we built something that was very special and um, you know it's you know we all we all feel a certain way about, you know, how everyone has uh, kinda of went, you know, their own ways and you know, um, you know but you know it won't take away from what we did. You know? When Pat Riley comes in, you guys mind are aren't aren't in it. He comes in with a big bucket of water. It's, it's all up here. You can do anything you want. I'm going to put my head in that bucket for three minutes. And everybody's sitting there like, yeah, the record is a minute and 30. Like, people that go scuba dive a minute 30, maybe two. And he did it for three minutes. Oh, come on. Three minutes. <laughs> Ernie, oh, he stuck his hand in there. Ask him next time you see him. He stuck With his hair? He can put yes. his hair under yes. there, too? Yes, yes. I don't know which part of that minutes. is more amazing. I'm telling you, he did it. So, like, the guys are looking at him like, you know what? He's Teamwork. I've always believed in, in in one concept is that is that you got to have a mission. <laughs> every family, you know, every team, every company has to have a philosophy, a vision, a mission. And here w with the Miami Heat, we've had one mission ever since I've been here. And it's very simple, <laughs> okay. And I think it covers the board uh, if you have any kind of an imagination. And I think I've explained this at times to you, Peter, about what our mission is. Our mission in Miami was that we wanted to become the hardest working, best conditioned, most professional, unselfish, toughest, most admired team in the NBA.